Hello all, welcome to this video on distributed computing. Today I will be talking about termination detection by weight throwing in distributed system. In distributed processing systems, a problem is typically solved in a distributed manner with the cooperation of a number of processes. In such an environment, inferring if a distributed computation has ended is essential so that the results produced by the computation can be used. Also in some applications, the problem to be solved is divided into many subproblems and the execution of a subproblem cannot begin until the execution of the previous subproblem is complete. Hence, it is necessary to determine when the execution of a particular subproblem has ended so that the execution of the new subproblem may begin. A fundamental problem here is to determine if a distributed computation has terminated or not. This is a non-trivial task since no process has complete knowledge of the global state and global time does not exist. A distributed computation is globally terminated if every process is locally terminated and there is no message in transit between any processes. Locally terminated state is a state in which a process has finished its computation and will not restart any action unless it receives a message. In the termination detection problem, a particular process or all of the processes must infer when the underlying computation has terminated. A termination detection algorithm is used for this purpose. Messages used in the underlying computation are called basic messages and messages used for the purpose of termination detection are called control messages. A termination detection algorithm must ensure the following. First is that the execution of a termination detection algorithm cannot indefinitely delay the underlying computation and the second is the termination detection algorithm must not require addition of new communication channels between processes. Now discussing the system model. At any given time, a process can be in only one of the two states, which is either active, where it is doing local computation, and idle, where the process has temporarily finished the execution of its local computation and will be reactivated only on the receipt of a message from another process. An active process can become idle at any time. An idle process can become active only on the receipt of a message from other process. Only active processes can send messages. A message can be received by a process when the process is in either of the two states that is active or idle. On the receipt of a message, an idle process becomes active. The sending of a message and the receipt of a message occur as atomic events. Now looking into the definition of a termination detection. Now let P i of t denote the state that is either active or idle of a process P i at the instant t. Now let C i j of t denote the number of messages in transit in the channel at the instant t from process P i to P j. Then a distributed computation is said to be terminated at time t0 if and only if for all the i, p i of t0 is idle. That is if all the processes in the system is idle and for all i j, c i j of t0 is 0. That is there are no messages in the transit. So to conclude. Thus, a distributed computation has terminated if and only if all processes have become idle and there is no message in transit in any channel. Now we look into the system model of termination detection by weight throwing. Now here a process called controlling agent will monitor the computation. A communication channel exists between each of the processes and the controlling agent and also between every pair of processes. Initially all processes are in the idle state. The weight at each process is 0 and the weight at the controlling agent is 1. 
The computation starts when the controlling agent sends a basic message to one of the processes. A non-zero weight W where W is in the range of 0 to 1 and it can also be the value 1 is assigned to each process in the active state and to each messages in transit. When a process sends a message, it sends a part of its weight in the message. When a process receives a message, it adds the weight received in the message to its own weight. Thus the sum of weights on all the processes and on all the messages in transit is always 1. When a process becomes passive, it sends its weight to the controlling agent in a control message, which the controlling agent adds to its weight. The controlling agent concludes the termination if its weight becomes 1. Now discussing the notations used here. The weight on the controlling agent and the process will be denoted by the letter W. B of DW is a basic message B which is a part of the computation that is sent here where DW is the weight assigned to this basic message. Then there is C of DW where C is the control message that is sent from the process to the controlling agent and DW is the weight assigned to it. Now the termination detection algorithm by weight throwing was proposed by Professor Xing Sang Huang who is currently a professor at the Department of Computer Science and Information Engineering, National Central University, Taiwan. His research interests include operating systems and distributed computing. He suggested the use of auxiliary controlling agent in his paper Detecting Termination of Distributed Computations by External Agents in 1989. Now we will discuss the algorithm. The algorithm is defined by the four rules. We are discussing the first rule. The first rule says that a controlling agent or an active process will be sending a basic message to one of the process say PW and it will split its weight W into W1 and W2. So we see that W1 plus W2 will be W and both W1 and W2 is greater than 0. Since we already discussed that when it is sending out a basic message, a part of W will also be sent with it. What it does here is, the controlling agent will have the weight W1, this part, and it will send the other part of it, W2, along with the basic message. So the weight of the basic message will be W2. An example of this is shown here. Here we can see that there is the controlling agent. The controlling agent initially has W weight as 1. Now it is divided into W1 and W2. And what it does is, when it sends a basic message to a process, it will send one part of the message along with B and the other it is retained here. So W1 is retained at the controlling agent and W2 is sent with the basic message that is said in rule 1. Now rule 2 says that on the receipt of a basic message process will add this weight along with its own weight. So its new weight will be W is equal to W plus DW and if the receiving process is in an idle state it will become active. The same can be seen here. So we saw that when this process is receiving a basic message from the controlling agent, its initial weight was 0. So, its new weight will be W is equal to W2 and this process was initially in the idle state. Since it received a message from the controlling agent, its state will be changed to active. Now rule 3 states that a process can switch from 
active to idle state at any time by sending a control message whose weight is W. That is, the weight it got from the basic message here DW will be sent back along with the control message. And now the idle process will have a weight of 0. So, looking in this example here, we see that the active process has changed its state into idle process. So, then what it does is it will send out its weight through a control message to the controlling agent. So, its weight was W2 that is sent along with the control message. So, its current weight will be 0. Now, rule number 4 says that on receipt of a message that is a control message with a weight DW, the controlling agent will add this weight to its own weight. So, its new weight will be W is equal to W plus DW. And if the weight is 1, it concludes that the computation has terminated. That can also be seen in this diagram. So, when the control message reaches the controlling agent, its previous weight was W1. So, it will add this W2 along with it. Now, its final weight is 1. Since its weight is 1, the task has been terminated. Now, we look into the correctness of the algorithm. Before that, we will be seeing a few of the notations used here. Here, A is the set of weights on all the active processes. B is the set of weights on all the basic messages in transit. C is the set of weights on all the control messages in transit. And WC is the weight on the controlling agent. And we will be using two invariants here, I1 and I2. So, I1 states that the weight at the controlling agent along with a union of all the three set, that is the set of weights on all the active process, set of weights on all the basic messages in transit and the set of weights on all the control messages in transit. When you take a summation of these, add it together, the weight will be 1. That is invariant 1 states that the sum of weights at the controlling process, active process, basic messages in transit and on all control messages in transit is always equal to 1. Similarly, we have invariant 2. Here it states that the weight, the total weight, all weight, that is a union of all the weights, that is uh, the weights on the active process, the weights on the basic messages in transit and the weights on all the control messages in transit. If you take a weight W out of this union, an element of this union of set, it will always be greater than 0. That is said here that the weight at active process, basic message in transit and control message in transit is a non-zero value. Now we see that initially the weight on the controlling agent is 1. So if we check the invariant 1, we will see that WC plus the summation of this unit is giving us 1. So we have seen that WC is 1. If this is 1, then the summation should be 0. So if the summation is 0, what it tells us? The union of these three set is a null value according to the invariant 2. So what happens here is, if it is a null value, then if you take a combination of union of A and B, that is the active messages and the basic messages in transit, that should also be a null value. Now, since we saw that A union B is a null value, what it implies is the termination is done. So, this will never detect a false termination. Also, from the conclusion of A union B being phi, when you verify the invariant I1, this is the value. 
So what we do is we'll replace it here. Since A union B is phi, WC plus the summation of all the weights in the control messages in transit, if you take a summation, will be equal to 1 according to invariant 1. So we also see that the message delay will always be finite because after the computation is terminated, finally the weight of the controlling agent will be 1. So that proves that this algorithm will always detect a termination in finite time. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.